So I'm glad you guys are watching today's video and if you are new, hit that subscribe button, give this video a huge thumbs up and let's go ahead and start pulling apart this interior on this Ford F-150 that is completely trashed on the inside and you'll see exactly why here shortly. That's a lot of dog hair, holy crap. So I do want to mention one thing, I don't know what type of farmer this person is, but I would say this is a herb farmer, if you will, if you kind of catch my drift just based on the smell inside this vehicle. It's definitely very herby. I'll just say that. Now, if you're a parent and you have kids, you can kind of understand some of these messes that happen over time. Um, it is definitely something as a parent that you'll realize that things get dirty much quicker when you have a bunch of rugrats in the back seats um, than if you didn't have any, even if you have dogs. Like kids usually do a pretty good job of making your car dirty really, really fast. As a recommendation, just like rubber floor mats, like I typically tell you guys about, Definitely recommend having seat under covers for car seats because one, it helps with creating those indents, not having those indents happen on leather seats or cloth seats, but also makes cleanup a ton faster. Now with all the dog hair vacuumed on this one portion, you can see how much is still embedded in the fibers. And one of the hardest things that I will say is when you have carpet, like this Ford carpet is really bad for it as it gets staticky super, super quick. It doesn't help that it's probably 40 degrees outside and it's low humidity. So there's a lot of static in the air just from that. Um, but using the foxtail pet detailing brush that you guys can pick up on foxclean.com, it helps with getting all of that pulled out of the fibers, helps getting it to the surface, so that way one, you get a majority of it up, but two, when you hit it with the vacuum again, all of it has been lifted to the surface. So I would say that the pet hair portion of this detail for all of the carpet inside this vehicle, without even counting the seats, was at least two hours to try to get all of it out. And I can guarantee if I went and did it all over again, I could probably still spend two more hours trying to get pet hair out. Like, I mean, this, this hair and this car and this carpet combination was horrible. That's all I'll say.
In the last video, a lot of you wanted to see the homemade DIY extractor that I put together because my old one broke before I get my new one. Um, so what I'm gonna do is if you guys don't follow me on ready, already on Instagram or TikTok, I'm gonna be posting that tutorial video on what parts and everything that I use to make my extractor on those platforms um, and also on Stoffer Garage Detailing too, which I'll have all that linked down below and I'll have it pop up on screen for you guys here. But make sure you go follow me over there. I'll have that video come out in the next couple weeks or so. But if you don't, follow me on those platforms as well. Now for all these floor mats, including the rubber ones particularly, I usually like to pressure wash floor mats, but by the time I got around to doing this portion of the detail, it was definitely freezing temperatures outside. I had wash buckets ready to do the exterior wash that iced over on top, so I had to wait till the next day to wash the outside of the car. And for the floor mats, I was gonna pressure wash, but it was probably 2 a.m. in the morning and definitely don't wanna do that to my neighbors. So um, used all-purpose cleaner on the floor mats, used my drill brush to agitate it, get all that dirt loosened up, and then just using my vacuum, which is a wet dry vac, to suck up all that dirt and wet fluid, and then hit them again with a second pass is the easiest way to clean them up if you don't have the option to pressure wash.
Now for all the interior panels inside the car, including the dashboard, the door panels, the center console, all the different components of it, I'm just using my all-purpose cleaner diluted, my detailing brushes, my microfiber towels, which all of those products are available on foxclean.com, and all of the spray products will be very soon available as well. Uh, so make sure you're part of that mailing list on foxclean.com and you're subscribed to this channel because when those products hit, I can guarantee you they will sell out in minutes. Um, you guys have been asking for them for a while and I'm super excited for that launch. So make sure you guys have all those notifications turned on so when they do hit, you can make sure you get your set, especially before Christmas time, which make great gifts. Now, if you haven't noticed already, this screen on this F-150 has a huge crack in it. And it's not the outside surface, it's the inside glass touchscreen portion, so it still functions. Um, but usually you guys get pretty nitpicky about how much liquid I spray on, spray on the electronics. I will say for this one in particular, I kept it to a minimal on the screen. But for the most part, when you spray a, you know, a spray bottle of liquid onto any surface inside of a vehicle, all of those components in modern cars, for most part, are all waterproofed and tested in situations of high humidity and also spray tested. Um, you know, as an engineer in the past, this is something that I had particularly worked on with engine connectors and connector and harness work for electricals of any system or any component. And it's something that always gets done nowadays because of this very reason and also just because of the fact of humidity concerns. So, um, be cautious, don't go crazy. But if you spray a you know switch panel inside your car 
you typically, I've never had a personal issue with, and you guys have seen my details and how much I've sprayed on them before. It's typically not a problem. Unless you take a pressure washer to the inside of your car, I highly doubt you'll have a problem. I will say the more I use this homemade extractor, the more I like it. Uh, my biggest upgrade recently, like I mentioned in the last video, was adding air to my pressure water tank. So that way I don't have to pump it and prime it all the time. I literally just can use it like a regular extractor. I've been really thrilled with it and that's why, like I mentioned earlier, I'm gonna show you guys all the parts and everything that I used to build it. Now for the leather seats, I used my leather cleaner and conditioner, my drill brush to get all of the paint and dirt and everything else that was embedded in these seats along with that dog hair out. Um, and then I'm using my leather conditioner to coat it, protect it, so that way it lasts a long time and hopefully doesn't crack any further in the future for the owner.
Now for the exterior portion of the vehicle, I have my three buckets here, two buckets. One is clean water, one is my soapy water for rinsing and washing that mitt. And then I have that blue bucket specifically for just wheels and tires. Um, I've been using the color foam in a lot of these videos recently, and that is something that'll be coming out very, very soon as well for you guys. It's something that I've never been able to find before, and I know that it's just, maybe it's more of a cosmetic and fun effect, but for me, it's just, it makes detailing a lot more fun too, especially when you can do different combinations with different colors. So like I mentioned earlier, all that's going to be dropping really, really soon for you guys, and I'm super excited about it. Um, but yeah, foam canner for the outside to pre-treat any bugs or dirt that's on the surface, helping it loosen up a little bit before we get to the wash mitt phase. Now one really cool thing about white cars, especially if they haven't done details in a super long time, is you can see how much dirt has been bedded on this uh, paint. And just by pressure washing it, uh, it literally changes colors. It's pretty cool. And for all these wheels and tires, I'm using a mixed combo of some wheel combination cleaners that I've been trying out, um, especially on the chrome and on the shiny parts of the car. It helps with loosening up all that dirt. It's an iron remover. It's a wheel cleaner. It's a couple things combined that I'm testing out right now, but it seems to work pretty well with minimizing the amount of actual scrubbing you have to do on the surface.
Now is the wash phase completely done? I'm gonna be using my drying towel from foxclean.com. A lot of you guys have these, and if you do, you know how awesome they are. They kick butt at drying an entire vehicle. This one towel itself can dry this entire truck without it even being coated with any wax or synthetic, you know, uh, coating or anything and then once I've dried the whole car I use it to dry the rims especially if they're polished like these ones and then I wash the towel but anyways that is the exterior wash Now, I hope you guys enjoyed today's detail. Make sure you subscribe if you're new, give it a thumbs up, leave a comment down below. I always try to respond back to you guys, and I hope you enjoyed the video, and I'll see you guys next week.